What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name is Michael Roman. There's a new Adam Warlock theory going around the internet and I gotta be honest, I really like this one. If you guys know me or have followed the channel before, I've been a huge proponent of Adam Warlock. I said he should have been in Infinity War and definitely should have been in Infinity Gauntlet, what we now know is renamed as Avengers Endgame. If you guys have followed the comic stories, you know why I feel this way. Well, this new theory is pretty awesome and I'm gonna break it all down. First, if you could grab the subscribe button, we're giving away two. PlayStation 4 Pros, as well as a whole slew of other Marvel related stuff. All you have to do, hit the subscribe button, leave a like and a comment on this video, and then I'll get into all the giveaway stuff again at the end of the video. So this scene right here has been the point of a ton of conjecture since the trailer's been released. If you guys remember, a lot of people thought that was perhaps Baby Groot up there on that machine, the way the reflection of the light hits it just perfectly. That's since been debunked, but Tony is obviously looking at something specific not just, as he puts it, the great vastness of space. And after the release of the IMAX trailer is when this Adam Warlock theory really started to pick up. Now, I would also like to point out that I noticed a couple weeks back when I was making the thumb for a different video with this exact same still shot, if you turn up the saturation all the way, you can see a very distinguishable red hue on the inside of the entire cabin of the ship that doesn't seem to emanate from anywhere in the regular frame. Notice we see the galaxy in the bottom right hand corner, but it's not emitting any particular kind of light, especially not something with the kind of vibrance to light up the interior of a ship. However, now with the release of the IMAX footage, we can see that there is specifically some light in that corner that's not part of the ambiance of the galaxy, rather something emitting its own very delible, very red light in the bottom corner. That is the light that is lighting up the interior of the ship. Now, as the Adam Warlock theory goes, depends on who you believe is going to save Tony Stark. So many of you have put forth, and I've seen it reported on so many sites, that it's obviously Captain Marvel. She's in the right part of space, she's on her way back to Earth, and she's gotta team up with Tony to defeat Thanos in the first place, so it would be awesome if they met in the first act. But I'm on clear record in at least four of my videos saying, that's specifically why I think it won't be Captain Marvel. It would just be lazy writing and or super loopholey to have Captain Marvel save Tony at the beginning of the movie and then lo and behold, what do you know, they're all Avengers now. So, given that I don't think it's going to be Captain Marvel, we can rule her out. There's only a specific handful of people who would be looking for the Benatar. Now, I've also put forth in a couple of my other videos that specifically it would be most likely Rocket. He would want to know how many members of the Guardians of the Galaxy survived and where they are and if they're okay, and he would want to know where his ship is. Remember, Rocket thinks of himself genuinely as the captain, and as such, the Benatar would be his ship. The other huge plot hole using Rocket escapes is that no one would know Tony needs saving in the first place. Remember, half of the universe dusted, so there's a 50-50 chance Tony's not even floating around in space. Rocket still would want to find the Benatar in spite of that. But if you're willing to forego that one choice, I think the next choice is likely. And here's how the theory goes. That Adam Warlock is on his way to find the Guardians of the Galaxy at all costs. Remember, he was made in response to the Guardians of the Galaxy ripping off, defeating, and eventually humiliating the Sovereign that group of perfect human beings created by the Enclave. Now in the end, in the post credit scenes, we see Adam Warlock's cocoon, and presumably she's creating Adam to go after the Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's a thread left untied. Now for those of you who will be quick to comment about the Rousseau saying that Adam Warlock is not in Avengers Endgame, those are the same Rousseaus that told you the title was not Avengers Endgame. Here's the thing, they would lie about anything at this point. I also have already outlaid in many of my videos, and you can find this on so many channels, Adam Warlock's importance to the Infinity War and Infinity Gauntlet storyline as a duality to Thanos, also setting up future events with what happens in the culmination of Infinity Gauntlet. Remember guys, specifically Avengers Endgame was originally named Infinity Gauntlet, and even though that title has changed, if we assume that the storyline and the script keep the namesake spirit, and we pair that with all the leaks we've had, both the Eric Selvig hardback book and the Thor and Rocket toy that say there is a new greater threat looming on the horizon, and the recent Russo's interview where they say that Thanos is completely done and retired, that leads to a new villain and a new threat. Adam Warlock is that threat and villain. The way that he was in Infinity Gauntlet, originally becoming too powerful and a source of evil and needing to be defeated. It also would sure up an enormous plot hole in this one of Marvel's most important linchpin stories. 
Guys, I've broken this down so many times before. If you want more information, please check out my channel, pop over to Comics Explained, or any of the Comistorian, there's a ton of them, where you can see the importance of Adam Warlock, specifically in the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. How he goes from good and evil, his split into the Magus and the Goddess, all of this stuff. You need to break it down for yourself, get a better understanding of it, but then it leads us to see why it is so important and so believable that Adam Warlock is actually going to make his appearance in this movie. Now, let's go ahead and throw this original screenshot of Conjecture back up with a comparison. The majority of the left side of the screen being the regular 16 by 9 aspect ratio that you're used to for movies. And right there on the end, I've gone ahead and thrown up the 1.43 by 1 IMAX ratio shot where you can see very inconveniently the impending red light that's either approaching the Benatar or being approached by the Benatar is completely hidden by the regular 16 by 9 bar ratio that we're used to looking at. And this is the point I would like to make. No matter how you saw Infinity War in IMAX or regular ratio, make sure to go see Avengers Endgame in the IMAX ratio. I saw both at the original release of Infinity War and there was no comparison. The IMAX was so much better, provided so much more information, and the shots looked far less cramped. And when they released Infinity War, you guys will notice that the only copy available for commercial purchase right now is the 16 by 9 regular barred aspect ratio. I was so disappointed to see they wouldn't be putting out the 1.43 by 1 IMAX ratio that would fill up your entire TV screen. And I think what they're probably going to do is wait for the 5 or the 10 year anniversary or the box set to go ahead and release those aspect ratios later down the road for those of us who specifically want them. Also a way to sell a second Avengers DVD to people who bought the first one. Kind of cheesy, but it's what it is, guys. Let's make just a couple more dollars off our super fans, as if Disney hasn't made enough money already off Infinity War. But hey, that's how they do it, guys. In the comments, let me know what you think. Is Adam Warlock actually going to show up here in Avengers Endgame, or are we going to have to wait for Phase 4? Did James Gunn getting fired off Guardians of the Galaxy 3 really throw a wrench in this whole thing? And or are you already familiar with Infinity War and Infinity Gauntlet, the comic book story, and do you already know how important Adam Warlock is, and are you feeling me? Let me know in the comments, and quickly, let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. Okay, we're giving away two PlayStation 4 Pros, one at the 100,000 and one at the 150,000 subscriber mark. We're also giving away some awesome Avengers plaques and some bobbleheads. All you gotta do to win any of this stuff, hit the subscribe button, leave a like and a comment on this video, then hit the notification bell to keep up to date with all my videos because the more videos you like and comment on, the better chance you have of winning. My name is Michael Roman. This is Everything Always. Thanks for checking out the channel and stick around. We'll be posting again real, real soon.